pop this open. Here's some hail. There's a snake skin yep, going up behind my propane tank. Well, good morning. So I got a lot planned this week. I'm going to get the hydraulic jacks fluid uh, changed out and get those working again. And one of the jacks didn't want to go down all the way, uh, trying to level out the RV. Once that's done, I'd like to get the outside power washed. But first, I need to start with batteries. Uh, you can see here that the batteries, now my lights are lighting up as I push the buttons. Neither set of my batteries are working. So I need to find my portable charger so I can get my, those batteries charged up, the house batteries. And I think I'm going to just take the... Uh, engine battery up and just have that swapped out for a new one. All right, out here to the front of the RV and she is filthy. Let me get this opened. A little harder to do that holding the camera. So we come down here, pop this open. And I could already see fluid levels are good. Which means I can get this puppy plugged in and charging. There's no corrosion on those. Let me pop this one open. This one's going to be more of a pain with all the wires. Yep, fluid level's good on that one too. And again, being a pain. So here's one of the things I'm going to be putting in for the transmission as well as in the power steering to help clean those systems. And I plan on changing out both of those systems. And then I also got seafoam high mileage for the engine. I'm going to uh, use probably about half this bottle for the engine and mix in with the oil, help clean any deposits. Now, when I got the RV, almost seven, eight years ago. I'd have to look it up again. And I did use the seafoam in the engine and it worked great. Cleaned out a lot of the deposits, but she's been sitting for three years since I bought the house. So it's hard to say the condition of the oil. When I checked it last, it was still Pretty clean looking but doesn't mean that there wasn't 
uh, water buildup or anything like that. You can see there, still looks fairly clean, topped off pretty well. But I'd like to still add it for whenever I do the oil change. And anything, all that's cleared out pretty nicely. So let me find the funnel. So there's the oil and transmission and power steering is right there. A little dirty, but the oil itself looks clean. I think the black is more from dirt buildup on the stick. And a good little trick for when with these long dipsticks is so you're not putting it on anything, getting it dirty. I have it hanging off the uh, latch for. Uh, the hood and you can see here it's not touching the ground or anything so i don't have to worry about it getting dirty hanging there Someone is all irritated, like I woke her up from her nap. On her little shart. Did you get your claw stuck in the... Again? Meow. You can see the windshield is awfully filthy, but let's get this puppy started. If I could find the right key. She goes purring like a kitten.
Okay, so RV has warmed up a little bit. This is my leveling jack system here. Uh, the controls, you can see I have a manual system. I got it on, fuse is good. But uh, what I need to do to check the levels of the fluid, let alone even uh, drain the system so I could swap out the fluid, is the jacks have to be uh, fully retracted. Alright, jacks are lowered, so I'm going to shut this off and crawl underneath and show you my setup here. Walk around here. See, I already got the pan. All that set up and ready. Now, every RV kind of has their own little setup and where the pump and everything is at. Mine, here's my pump and reservoir, my fill cap. And that, I also use that to check the fluids. It is right in front of my passenger side uh, front tire. So let's get this checked here. Okay, broke it loose. So now I want to clean off all this gunk before I Yeah. Let me go grab a paper towel. Wipe that off because I don't want any of that debris to fall into the reservoir. All right. You can see here the different colors of fluids. There's the old one and that's the new one. And what my hydraulic system uses is transmission fluid. So I got Valvoline there and for the Mercron that it uses. And you always want to check your manual and if you're unsure call the manufacturer. Now they do allow me to use the fork oil uh, nothing lower than the 15 weight. What it does is it helps prevent that popping sound that you get every now and then, uh, especially when temperature changes. All right, first cup going in. If I can see what I'm doing.
So here's the linkage that I'm sure is pretty stiff. So what I'm going to do is I'll spray it, see if that helps with anything, and we'll just go from there. If anything, I'll take it off, clean off the rust, and see what that does. Give this a quick scrub. All right. Let that soak for a minute. And while I was underneath here, if it'll focus. Yeah, come on. There we go. There's a snake skin up going up behind my propane tank. Odds are it's that big old black snake that I saw in one of my bays about a month ago. Probably looking for mice and chipmunks and stuff. That's all right. Let me crawl out from underneath this thing and we'll give the shifter some movement and see if that PV blaster will do anything to the rest. If not, I'll have to take it apart and see if I can move it by hand. And go from there. All right, let me get get her jacked up and front tires off the ground and we'll start her back up and do the tires back and forth, get that fluid worked into the, through the transmission, uh, if I could talk straight, get the fluid, that treatment mixed through the uh, hydraulic system. Since this not only uses the hydraulics for the power steering, but as a brake booster as well.
Don't know if you can see it, but getting a little bit of hail. This right here, I gotta fix. This is the only area that the water runs down and I get it inside. And if we watch the mat, maybe we'll see some hit, hail hit it. Not much, just a few small pieces. Right there. About pea size for what little pieces that do come down.